Hey boys, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon. This is Footprints. This is designed by a number of people over in Norway. Ellis Svensson, Gear Andre Qualfrist, and also Admund or Asmund Svensson, pub or designed in fact, uh, illustrated by Andrea Almano and published by Chili Fox Games, who is also a kind of a Matago and Friends partner. So I've partially set up the game. I thought I would not zoom out and give you more, but basically there's a few more of these terrain tracks. And we're going to start off on this hand side. Remember, there is a few more than these, another three more to place out. However, what's also going to happen on that leftmost tier is you're going to have these huts. And going on reverse turn order, so everybody's starting, he'll have the tusk. Everybody else is going to pick one of these tiles to start off at. Wherever you start, you are going to get the bonus on the left hand side, so you can bump yourself up one of these track markers, which relates to how much you can move. You can also get yourself some berries, you could get yourself some various other things too. Also, for the first three of these final tracks, remember there's a few more off to the left hand side, you'll be able to place out these calm tokens. Now these are important because if you happen to place out your special token at the end of the game next to it, you're carving, then you'll get yourself a bonus at the end. For example, the amount of things you've cleared off times by that footprint tokens, or you might get something whereby the amount of positions you moved along, so let's move along nine at the end of this for my blue movement tracker, then you'll get 18 points because it's two times the distance, or in this case, two times the difference for light green. So this is a game whereby you're going to have a number of cards, you'll have 14 cards, play them all out, and then you will see if you have the most points, most points is the winner. So let's say everyone else has gone and I'm going last, and let's say I'm placing out here, I can bump my track along here, so now I can move a bit more on grey, and I can move a bit more on light green. Again, to try and get the most points, you are going to turn on a card, which we'll refer to. You're going to choose if you want to play as the A side or the B side, basically a lighter, simpler game. I recommend using the A side first, but I have played with the B cards too. And there's six different kind of leaders, six different people you can play as, six different sort of, um, I guess, cave symbols, cave paintings. And I'm recently placed as the horse. So what you're going to do is ditch the B card back into your baggie. And then what you're going to do is shuffle up these other cards. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take the top seven cards, add your A card or B card, your leader card, mix them in and deal out four cards. So you now you've got four cards. Everything else will go back in that pile. Again, the game will end once everyone has played out all 14 cards. So let's just look at my first four cards. I have got this card here. I've got this card here. And just to make it a bit simple, I'm going to keep it over this side as well for my other two cards. Everybody also take a footprint card. A footprint card is a bonus they're trying to reach it by the end of the game. So at the end of the game, I want to try and reach this objective, which is to get this marker up to eight and also being able to get this hut off the board, which actually happens to work quite nicely together. If I can do it, I get six points. If I don't do it, I lose three points. So let's just leave that in shot slightly out of the way. And also you'll have that card before you define where you wanted to go. So maybe I wanted to move this one, which is the track of my choice and a fire card. A fire card here can be played when you play out one of your 14 cards. In this case, you move your blue track back one, if possible, and the other threes will all move up. So I quite like these kind of cards. So I could have had that one and that can be visible too. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take my turn. Now I've got four cards to pick from. You'll always have four until your final four cards, in which case you can have three, two and one cards left. And the first thing I do is pick one of your cards to play and either pick the top action or the bottom action. So right now I can move a distance of two if I move green, so I can go one, two, and then I can move one on gray. So I can move down here on like this and take myself, in this case, another footprint card, some more objectives to get more points. However, I could move gray first. Obviously from this location, I could not do this. And then I can move green, but as you say, I can't do that. Instead of doing this, I can place this one out, which is move this track along one space, which helps towards my bonus. And also I can move onto any terrain. So I can move onto here, any terrain of type I like. And that card is then spent and then it's just ditched. But then I'm gonna get a new card out and I get the next card out. So that's gonna go into this card pile. I'm gonna keep on going until we play that all 14 cards. And at some point I'm gonna see my A card. So let's just talk about my A card briefly. So my A card in this case is choose a terrain type, move up to as many spaces on that terrain as your corresponding skill level, then repeat it for a different terrain type. Do not collect any bonuses. So in the last game I happened to wait a while and then scooch across like here and then here, and then see if that helped me out. Now, if you happen to reach the end, uh, you can get 15 points for going first, 14, 13, etc. 
And unlike games like Quest for El Dorado, which is highly compared to, this is not a race game. You do not have to reach the end, because you could reach the end and then you're going to come back again, because you're wasting actions. However, 15 points might seem good. Uh, in the last game, two people, in fact, I finished on 14, some finished on 15. The winner didn't even touch the end. And in terms of these bonuses as well, you do not need to get the bonuses. I didn't, I've never actually got a bonus, and I've won the first two games. The third game, I didn't win. Uh, the person who did go here did not win also doing that. And as you can see, there's only a difference of one point for reaching the end. Obviously, very colourful. What you can do is, I have done this before, and future games, you can flip them around so you can see which side you want to play as. Again, each time you're going to get different uh, orientations. But each time you bump along, you are also going to get bonuses. You're going to get another piece of wood. You can get yourself a berry. You can get yourself like a volcanic tile. And also, you can get yourself things such as more of these uh, fire cards. So fire cards, you can only ever use once per turn. So what you're going to do is pick a card, play it, and then also then play a fire card with it. Then that's discarded. If you can, so let's say I'm over here at this point and I've got enough resources to build this. Every of these tiles are different. So like I said, there's six different boards that are all different. For example, this one happens to have a spear thrower, another symbol different here. But as you can see, apart from the color schemes, they're actually different. So for example, you have different cards. So I, for example, have quite a lot of the gray cards. This person's got a lot of blue cards. Equally, your different amounts of things needed to complete these things, which I'll talk to you about next. So you can build an adjacent space. This one is gonna cost you three wood. That's gonna cost you two of the like rock symbols. This one's gonna cost you three mammoth and this one's gonna cost you four berries. But once you've done that, you can now place it out. Where you place it out, it must be on the same terrain type. So for example, this one could go here as it matches and anyone can actually stand on it. And then I'm gonna get myself one wood and one footprint card. Now, when you do take a footprint card, you do not need to keep what the card is. Now that one I don't think is too difficult. And if you choose not to keep it, you just discard the card. But if you choose to keep it, remember, you will lose three points if you do not complete it. So that's going to keep on going. Now, like I said, the third or the, the third thing you can do, like I said, is build and get the bonuses. If there's spaces built to get a bonus. If someone is here, then you place this out because you're here. You're only getting this bonus. You'll not get that bonus because it's not uncovered. In terms of movement, by the way, you also you can move through other people, but you can never land on someone else's space. So you can move through these spaces too. They're classed as unoccupied. And if you happen to reach three points at the end, you're going to get three points for reaching further along these respective tracks. And the fourth thing you can do is you can get a power. So imagine I've got this out and I've still got some mammoth tokens left. So for example, I placed out here and I was, let's say, here. Then what's going to happen is I'm going to get a spare mammoth token and that's going to come from this little pot here. And it doesn't come with these nice containers. Uh, check out my accessories playlist for these. You can spend one of those if you want to, and it's going to bump you up again on this track, which is good, because the more bumps you get up, you're going to get more bonuses too. And you can get more bonuses for unlocking these things. So, for example, you get five points at the end of the game if you happen to have got this thing off. You get three points for this one, six for here, nine for that one. Of course, they all do vary. And you also get fairs to other points as well. So, for example, if you get out all four of those different symbol types, so we've got wood down here, and again, if you need to, you can take three pieces. This one, again, there's one and also three piece tokens in here too. And this one over here, again, one and three piece of the rock tokens. So it does vary dramatically. It's very different in way to which you can score. People have very much enjoyed this game. I've only so far played it as a two and a three, and the scores have been very close, literally a few points in it. Literally one of these cards has determined the winner in most games. But you'll be scoring based on if you have reached the end, you'll score based on how many of these complete. And every game I generally find people do get all 23 points. As I always add up to 23, it's all very uh, even in terms of symmetry of the variable power powers, etc. Especially on the boards, they're all identical. And then you're going to get points depending on how far along you've moved. You're also going to get points based on how many of your footprint cards you've completed. And then lastly, you are going to get points based on any tokens left over. So every two equals one point rounded down. And if you have any of these fame cards left, you get one point for every fire or flame card left remaining. So that's the game. It is very good. Like I said, my rating is like a 7.7. .7. Uh, initially, I thought this was quite washed out based on a, a Dice Tower video, but actually, it's very beautiful to look at. I love the art work on here too, very bright and vivid. Uh, in terms of everything going back in the box, it does appear neat, but actually, once you've got all the baggies that it kind of comes with, it nowhere near fits in. There's way too much stuff to go in here, so maybe you do need to lose the insert. And I've typically done what I've suggested, which is one bag for each small stuff, which is a different color, and a large bag for each individual, uh, I guess, set of uh, cards. Now, the rule book. Very good rule book, although some things I wish were in a slightly different order. It's very white, which might put some people off. 
And something which I've already done, but I put it right down the bottom, but still very good that they've done this, is recommendation in terms of storage. So for each mini small bag, you put a porn, engraving, etc. And each medium sized bag, you put those cards as I mentioned too. So as you can see, like I said, that's the full setup. But I thought for actual explanation, I didn't zoom out, which allows you to see a bit more detail on the cards, etc. Highly recommend again, like I said, check out the had a setup play and review playlist, the Mass Games playlist, etc. The Spiel Essen playlist, where is where I got it from. In fact, I had it sent afterwards, but it still counts. And like I said, very enjoyable. Also check out my sleeving playlist because I do sleeve up these cards too. And I look forward to speaking to the next one. Enjoy the game. This has been Footprints from 2023. Thanks very much for watching. Footprints, back to the table.